Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Now it has been quite a while since I have actually done a review of the autopilot software and currently we are on version 11.1 2023.32.7. Now let's see what this brings and especially compared to what we are used to seeing from FSD beta in the US you guys really need to know what is going on here oh it's breaking for the bus which is just parked on the side so that is definitely something that's not good and again braking for the truck here it should go to 50 kilometers an hour at a white sign it does not it stays at 70 it indicates 50 but autopilot does not change to 50. now we're waiting for that bike to clear the path for the guy in front of me and the guy next to me doesn't really care about that just goes on so now it just changed to 50 at this point so that is way too late now again we haven't had any serious updates on autopilot we got more restrictions and actually improvements over the past two or three years so i thought it was well worth showing everybody what the difference is between what we are used to seeing now in the us and what is actually um, going on in europe and basically the rest of the world so the next test point as usual is here the uphill and downhill section so the little bridge i can do 70 kilometers an hour here and i left some room with the car in front of me because in the downhill section there is a convergence of those two roads or two lanes and usually it goes to hunt for the center of that but let's see what it does in this update yeah it is slightly going to the center and then going to the right again after all those years i still don't get why the car just doesn't keep going straight on it should be a fairly easy thing to implement now here we are coming up to a roundabout and as of a couple of updates ago it actually slows down for the roundabout unfortunately as you will see the car is not going to be able to take the roundabout because of all kinds of legal restrictions and it would actually enter the roundabout here and just drive into that car so let's do that again and hope there's no car coming from the other side to show you how it actually reacts take two for the roundabout let's see hopefully there's no car coming from the left this time and we can let it do its thing so you guys can see what actually happens here in europe and outside of the us and canada as to what the car actually does so it is slowing down and now it's going to start to turn and then it just aborts autopilot because it is not legally allowed to take such a curve and to actually i think this is considered to be a lane change as well or crossing into an intersection and the car is not allowed to do that on its own coming up is the dreaded s-curve now here the car usually fails because it is attempting that curve at too high of a speed to be within the current UN ECE regulations and uh, let's see what it does this time oh it was braking hard for that car crossing let's hope there's no traffic coming from the other side here and let's see what it actually needs to do is to slow down and it is slowing down okay okay not even a warning about the angle now, there is a car in front of me going way too slow at the moment so we will try that again but it is actually slowing down and that would be a nice improvement but let's see if it is consistent okay second attempt let's see let's leave as much room as possible to the car in front of me enabling autopilot and let's see if it slows down again and to what extent Ah, the car is slowing down to turn I guess but still to 55 no warnings about autopilot 
it's handling the turn going to the middle but still staying just within its lane slowing down here as well the steering is not one smooth motion the steering wheel is like going a little bit back and forward to adjust for the turn but okay that's definitely an improvement now let's do some on-ramp and off-ramp testing so something that I noticed for years already and I still haven't figured out why exactly that is is that when I move to the second lane here in one go and I hit the autopilot button it tells me to go to the first lane again and this is happening each and every time and uh, we're still yeah a long time away from the exit that we actually need to take now traffic is really busy this morning I don't know why but for the past couple of weeks traffic has been increasing dramatically during the daytime even on the smaller roads which make it a lot more difficult to get the same testing conditions each and every time but what we need to do is about a kilometer away we have an exit actually a semi double exit so it's an exit which it is not allowed to take on its own so that has been taken away by the UNEC regulations because it is considered a lane change and the car cannot automatically do a lane change whereas it was able to do that to use kind of a loophole in the system because it's not really a lane change it's an exit but anyway it was able to do it they took it away like two years ago or something and now I have to manually use the blinker to use the exit now let's see how aggressive it takes the exit so blinking and it usually had a second jerk here eh, a tiny one a very tiny one but that's that's okay and then we take the second exit here as well to turn around and go in the other direction again again this is a section where you can do 120 it's at 110 only now it's going to 120 taking the exit have to confirm it whoop whoop okay that was not what I expected it started abruptly and then automatically went to whoop whoop I blinked left guy yeah I blinked left and it actually didn't do it it took the split on the right side so yeah splits and exits are not handled that well unfortunately let's test the merging onto an on-ramp so here I just want to merge onto the highway it's telling me to do that I'm following directions here yep and it's doing that quite okay and now of course it wants me to move over to a faster lane and that's going quite smoothly as well although it might accelerate a bit quicker it's uh, just too lazy in the acceleration when passing cars now the next point is a real double exit so I have to take the exit on the exit but again I need to initiate it manually now see what the autopilot speed actually does here so we're approaching the exit 400 meters left the car is positioning itself a little bit more to the right and it's already slowing down to 100 kilometers an hour and people are coming up behind me at higher speeds so the car should only start to slow down when it actually is on the exit and not before the exit slowing down to 70 no warnings about excessive speed for autopilot but it is going down to 60 even even though autopilot speed indication says 70 is possible now let's see what it does here here is autopilot speed limited the warning and I want to merge to the right it is going there and it is aborting so it was quite abruptly going there 
but it was not able to complete the maneuver. Up ahead is another fine example where you have to keep an eye on the autopilot speed indication. Because here this is a road as you can see I can do 70 kilometers an hour on this and just a little bit up ahead there is the sign that I can only do 50 kilometers an hour. Now the car is actually reading 50 kilometers an hour but as you can see above the blue steering wheel icon there is still saying 70 kilometers an hour so the car would actually continue to do 70 kilometers an hour in this location potentially getting you a fine and it uh, keeps going uh, for quite some time so now it says 50 sometimes it's 50 beyond the traffic light here that we are approaching it seems like it's maybe a time delay that's that's in there i don't know exactly how to describe it but the same thing can be seen from the other side at uh, the traffic light that we are coming to now it's also like 100 meters before the traffic light or even 50 meters before it the speed limit changes to 50 kilometers an hour you can see the limit change and then it changes back to 70 and only after the traffic light it will actually go down to 50 kilometers an hour which means that if you would let autopilot do its thing you would get a traffic ticket a speeding ticket so speed limits is definitely something that tesla needs to work on to get to especially level 3 autonomous driving so here we have the situation where the cars are halfway parked into the road and I can enable autopilot while I'm driving next to those parking areas. So here we go. And let's see what the car will actually do. I can go to 50 kilometers an hour. Goes a little bit to the side, beeps a bit, goes really close to the car. And now it should go to the right side, which is doing fine. Now there's a trailer parked which the car would definitely hit if it doesn't go to the side. And it's, <laughs> it's too close for comfort. It would actually go into the trailer probably because it's not designed in Europe at least to go around obstacles. So you can see that is why we really want the DCAS regulation here available to us because that would allow FSD beta to come to Europe and bring a lot of improvements. I know it's beta but I'm a tester so I want the beta as soon as possible of course and I think it would be a very good thing in terms of safety and capabilities of the car because the car is more than capable of doing all these things but it's just that regulations artificially make autopilot worse than it actually is and that's something you don't see every day oh. <laughs> the guy nearly fell off now what i also noticed during my testing is that there is a lot of inconsistency like for example the s curve actually at some point during my testing it was taking that multiple times at 30 kilometers an hour so instead of going slowing down to 50 or 60 what it was doing today in previous days it was going way down to 30 kilometers an hour so there is inconsistency the same with entering or exiting the highway the entering of the highway at one time where it actually totally freaked out and autopilot was disabled at that point so yeah there is room for improvement but it is what it is and i just wanted to show you guys and remind you guys what we have to deal with on a daily basis here in europe with standard autopilot or even fsd but that doesn't re really mean much for us anyway so there you have it hope you enjoyed it if you did please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit that subscribe button and make sure you click that little bell icon so you don't miss out on any new videos and for now 
Thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one. Bye bye.